too long. Happy New Year. It, yes, it has. Yes, it has. It's it's uh it's probably my bad, but um you know the holidays happened and there was just a lot of stuff going on. Um, we had a little mini launch there in December, so I was kind of busy with that. It's it's great. I'm happy we're here now. Me too. I've been looking forward to this ever since you sent the topic my way, and I was like, hmm, juicy. Well, uh, my name is Amanda V. I am the coaching coordinator for Sex Coach U, also known as SCU. I'm also a grad just about a year ago, coming up on that now. I'm located in um, Southern California near Los Angeles. And where are you in the world? Well, hi, everybody. My name is Sarah Martin, and I am the co-creator and co-director of the Business of Sex Coaching program here at Sex Coach U. And I'm coming to you live this evening from Vilnius, Lithuania, of all places. I love it here. And I love it here. <laughs> it's good. It's good to it's good to be happy. It's good where you that are. we love where we are. Yes. It is. It is. Um, we're going to talk about today's theme, which is everything is content. Um, the the uh, inspiration, if you will, happened to me from a reel or a TikTok, which is which is a song. Everything is content. Everything is content, and it's literally like creators making their thing. And I thought to myself, well, how can we, as sex coaches, sex coaches in training, sexological professionals, do the same thing? How can we? Um, how, what, what content can we create and um, what, how does that pay off for us? So let's, let's dive in. Um, please define content. Sure. And for this one, like I figured I'd go and just double check the, the official definition because like, I'm like, well, it's media. It's to do with media. And Wikipedia kind of backed me up on that and said, content is the information contained within communication media. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty broad definition and that kind of jives with this everything is content uh, vibe. But like it's, so the information contained inside of communication media. So it's not necessarily the media itself, but it's what you put in there. So that could be a dance on a reel. It could be a still image. It can be text. It can be uh, audio, it can be video, it can take lots and lots of different forms. Um, is anything not included? I don't think I put that in our in our little outline of questions, but what what is not included in content? Well, like, so again, if it's not inside of communication media. So if you're not sharing it, if you're not sharing it, it's not content, right? Mm, well, if you're not sharing it, it's not content. And it's also like, you know, I think to an extent here, we can put some of our own boundaries in place. You know, like if I'm writing to myself in my journal, it's not really content. Like it could be, I could take it out. And yeah, so maybe it's in the sharing. It's in the communication of it that said information becomes content. Let's go with that, Amanda. I think what, what you can see here is that there's probably several different ways you can define content. And I don't think that that's quite as important as having an understanding of what does it mean to you specifically and your business and what are you going to do with it? Well, I know that when I think about creating content, uh, my preferred content is, is video. I like being on camera and, uh, and, Instagram works really well for that, for me, for my audience. Um, there are times when I'm like, everything is content. Amanda, the algorithm just wants you to put something on there. Just, just post any darn thing. And I think to myself, I, I, I'm going to, it's going to take so much energy. What if it doesn't pay off? Um, how will I know if it's valuable or a waste of my time? I don't want to I think it's human nature to want to protect ourselves in that way. So like, how can we know if it's going to pay off? Well, it's such a hard question. Well, I mean, 
I'm going to answer your question with a question and say, well, what's the job of your content? Like, what do you want it to do? Like if the, if the very best outcome happens, what is that outcome? So I thought I knew that answer. <laughs> when I first started, I'm getting warm. Sorry if I start to shine. Um, I thought I knew that answer. And I thought it was like, I'm going to create a lot of social media content and the people are going to start reaching out in the DMs and I'm going to get all kinds of clients asking me to please take their money. And what so I found out was that that was not the case. Well, what I'm hearing there then is that your the job that you're giving your content in that case is you want it to initiate conversations, mm -hmm. right? That you want the result from it to be that somebody reaches out to you. Right. And so I made sure that I was very clear in what I wanted. Put, put an emoji, put your favorite emoji in the comments section or reach out to me in the DMs if you have a question about this or click the link in my bio to go to my website. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that's like, I've heard that as being like, be very clear about wh what you want them to do. Make those tasks as easy as possible. In fact, going to my website is like the hardest thing because we're actually asking them to leave the platform. Um, asking a question in the DM requires it's essentially my, my potential clients to reach out to me and spend a time typing out a full sentence. And the easiest of the things would be literally just put, put a eggplant emoji in my comment section, whatever. Um, all of those things worked to a degree, but I wasn't getting, I wasn't getting clients. I was getting emojis and the conversations weren't happening organically in the DMS. What I decided, what I pivoted to, and I like this much more for me, was I started creating content that was educational and entertaining. Um, it gave proof to who I am in a way that I can't necessarily go out and like meet all of these people in real life. I don't have that much time. But anybody whom I did talk to, I could send them to my Instagram page and say, if you'd like to know more about me and the way I work, it's an extension of my website. It is social proof that I exist. I am actively trying to create um, educational and entertaining content for people who come to my, to my Instagram page. And that to me, like when I made that shift to me, my numbers started going, I started seeing actual proof that I got more eyes on me, that people were actually watching my stories more than once or whatever. Um, I forget if there was a question here, but, uh, that, that was how I found out like what was valuable to me. And I don't know if maybe you want to add on to that. I mean, I think what you've just illustrated is a great like case in point that like there's no one magic bullet thing that I can say right now and that sorts out your content strategy because that would be like how long is a piece of string, right? It's going to depend. And in your case, what did you do? You tried new things. You paid attention to how your audience responded. And then you learned how this piece of content or this content channel rather fits into your overall strategy and how you use it. And in fact, a lot of times social media is like that, though it's, it varies, right? Some people do a lot of the relationship building on social media itself. And that's mainly through content that connects in that way to where people build a parasocial relationship with you. So then reaching out in the DMs doesn't feel as awkward as it might feel if that hasn't been the tone of your content, right? Yeah. And, you know, for some people, content, you know, it's, it fits into the strategy instead in terms of a, like, I'm sick of repeating myself. So, you know, somebody asks a question, it's great when you can just respond with a link to a video or an article or somewhere where you've already fleshed that out. You've already answered it. True. Save you from typing the same response 50 times to 50 different people. 
And also if you find that you're getting the same question over and over, that can be a really good indication of, ah, make a bit of content about this thing. And then I've got my, my permalink. I've got my place to send people whenever they ask that. And then how knowledgeable do I look when somebody reaches out with a question and I can respond with a fully fleshed out article or a really informative video that totally answers their question, right? In general, our content, and cause that's the thing, right? Cause you can have marketing content. You can also have sales content. You can have content that does all sorts of different things, right? Cause we're talking about information. So how it fits in and how you're gonna use it. Like that's part of where you paid attention to what you like doing. And like, that's why this is in all the advice. This is why we keep telling you, like this doesn't have to feel hard. And actually, if you choose things that feel hard because hard work is real work, like you will burn out. Like people burn out on social media all the time, for example, because like, if the only reason you're doing it is to feed an algorithmic beast to get likes, like you're gonna wind up disappointed because your business doesn't run on likes. It runs on human beings and relationships and cash flow. I was asked to help someone um, improve their Instagram profile uh, for, for, for marketing. She, she mm -hmm. wanted to market herself better on Instagram and um she was like can you can can you help me and i was like sure no problem well what how much time do you spend on instagram like is that where your is that where your client base is and she was like i think so i don't spend any time on instagram i hate social media and i was like okay well <laughs> uh my first job for you is to spend a few hours on instagram because you you're going to, you're going to pick up on a lot of what do stories look like and what do uh, reels look like? And what's the difference between a story and a reel? And if you don't have any idea about that, that, that uh, land, that platform, then it's going to be really hard, right? Like I don't, I'm not a blogger. I, I don't identify as a, as a writer, even though I do, I do write, I write for SEU. Um, and I'm like, kind of, I'm given the, um, the, the layout of like exactly how to post it to our medium.com page. And I need those instructions every time because I don't read blogs. I don't ever like, I'm not actively on those platforms looking at Ooh, this is, that was such an exciting way. It was such an exciting article. And I really love that and moved me. And I feel like I want to learn more about that topic. I'll never, even though I, I guess I have the ability to write, I don't want to get into that, that platform. I don't want to do it. It's going to feel very difficult every time I do it. I just, I can't, I can't stress that enough. That, that bit of advice that you gave me was just so helpful. <laughs> like, like what you do. Well, if it's like pulling teeth, you're going to struggle to be consistent with it. And, you know, like perfect consistency isn't like, it matters less than like consistent enough. Right. I, I think this is another thing I'll just call out when it comes to the content creation process. And because so much is wrapped up in content creation, right? Because we're talking about really big things like visibility and deciding to be visible in a much bigger way, which can be connected to all sorts of things with survival and you know all of that stuff too, right? Like being visible can be scary. And it's also tied up in some of the, like the tendencies that we all have to try to keep ourselves safe. Things like, you know, perfectionism or, you know, like looking and thinking that it should be, or it has to be this way, you know, and, like that often winds up being the enemy of, of done or of getting your important ideas as imperfectly captured as they may be out into the world. You know, I, the way that I heard it put once, and I forget if it was Cara Lowenthal, who is a life coach or someone else who said this, but like, be okay with doing like A minus work, you know, be okay with doing B plus work. And as somebody who was like, really disappointed in herself if she didn't get straight A pluses, like 
that statement had big impact. I'm like, what do you mean? When has it ever been okay for me to be anything other than A plus? And it's like, well, you can do that and put out one piece of content once a month that you have gone over with a flea comb to perfect, or you can put out that B plus work every day. And the whole like content as communication media, right? Like the point is to deepen relationships and start conversations. Like that's the whole point of what we do in marketing. And we've said this before many times that like sales comes down to conversations, right? And these are with real people. So like a thing I see a lot of people doing in their content is like this performing like how they think they should in the void of the internet and forgetting that like actually your job in your content is to come out and forge connections or deepen the relationship that you already have with somebody. We're talking about people, which as sexuality professionals, like we're so uniquely placed to like get it, right? And your content, like Amanda, what's great about your content, especially like more recently, like you're showing your people that you get it. Like that's like the main thing that you do. And like, I, I've watched your journey on the Instagram I feel like one of the, like on the Instagram because I, I'm a very newcomer to Instagram and I'll say like I do not love that platform however um more and more I'm finding that it's a networking tool like people are directing me to their Instagram rather than their LinkedIn which didn't used to happen a few years ago so I'm like well, okay fine I'll make an Instagram <laughs> But it's like that's how I feel about LinkedIn. I'm like, no, I don't need to be on LinkedIn. I'm 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 a theater major. Like, why? Why do I need to be on? Well, it's because I'm also a sex coach with a business who like is a legitimate business and and somehow LinkedIn provides legitimacy to a lot of people. It doesn't necessarily to me, but it does to potential clients. And therein is that, that marketing strategy of like, well, where are your clients looking for you? Where, what are, what do your clients, potential clients want to see? What will they learn? How will they learn to trust you? How will they yeah. get, find you and find interest in you? And I do I mean, kind of want to go ahead. Oh no, you go, you go. Oh, I was going to, I was going to suggest a pivot. Let's pivot. Okay. So pivot, I would like, I've seen content calendars being offered as um, lead generators, because I know what, what it is, uh, email captures, they want me to be on their list and, and, and coaches are sending out, don't know what to post on social media, here's a content calendar, 30 days, 30 ideas, you could batch create them, you don't have to, you could do them daily, but here's 30 ideas. And they don't always, and I admit, I've actually gotten one or two of these content calendars to give me ideas of what to say, what to post. How do you feel about that? So it was so interesting because when you, so newsflash, spoiler alert people, like we talk about what we're going to talk about before we talk about it in front of you. <laughs> and when you first set this question through, I'm like, what do you mean? Because a content calendar, as I've understood it, like working in marketing and marketing strategy and development is like where you sit down and have a strategic conversation as a marketing team about, okay, so these are the promotions that we want to schedule for quarter one. So let's create a content calendar around that to support this launch or, you know, this promotion or this flash sale. And as solopreneurs, like, you know, it doesn't have to be a big team. You can do that on your own too. And every quarter, take a look and say, okay, what am I promoting this quarter? Even if like what you're promoting is your one-on-one -on -one coaching packages, it doesn't have to be anything other than that. Just think about, okay, well, like how do I want to map out content so that I'm telling a story, right? Like story and the power of narrative is something that we know connects deeply in with humans psychologically. It's part of how we feel understood. It's part of how we come to understand because what you're talking about, I would think of that instead as almost like a content template, or in that case, like a set of prompts. Um, is. That is what I'm talking about. Yeah. And there are lots and lots of different things that you can get in this respect. So I, I am a super big fan of templates, of prompts, of 
AI, right? Because you might have heard lots of talk right now about chat GPT or other similar programs that can help you with copywriting or give you ideas. You can go to chat GPT and say like, you know, give me 10 article topics that would be interesting for, you know, X, Y, Z. Like, yeah. Sex coaching or like fill in some details about your clients or their specific desires. And gotcha. the robot will come up with a bunch of stuff. And it's great because starting with something other than a blank page is so helpful. Like again, you wanna do B plus work, right? Start with something, anything, and that'll get you moving. But like, that's like, that's the beginning. That's like getting the first words on the page in lieu of you writing your own first draft and then having to scrap a bunch of it down the road, right? Because what you're still going to look at is like, you'd be like, hmm, well, this doesn't work. But like this, I see where this is going. I want to tweak it. I want to modify it. You can use all of these tools to get the juices flowing. I think where people get into trouble is when they're trying to look to these tools to be their savior. To, oh my goodness, like this is finally going to fix my social media. Like, no, like you still need to come and like put yourself into it. And that's the part that's hard. That's the part that's scary. Because if you actually put you in there, what happens? You become visible. So, you know, a set of 30 prompts for 30 days worth of social media posts isn't going to solve in an instant the fear that you have around being visible, right? What helps with that is gradually expanding your capacity for visibility over time. But what those prompts can help you with is a way to get started, a way to not be staring at a blank screen and going, where do I even begin? How do I even structure a caption? Like, what do I even talk about? Does that make sense? Does that help? Absolutely, I think. Um, and, and I think, I hope that we as coaches are able to get creative, to reframe, to, think of things in a different way. That's reframing. Um, but I, I, I'd like to think that that is part of our work. When someone comes to us and says, um, you know, with, with a, I can't think of anything right now, creativity. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so when I've been comes single till I'm 30. I'm a loser. I'm a failure. Like I'm just thinking about my own clients. And it's right. Like what do you mean? You're bringing so much more life experience to the table and like, look at the insight that you have and look at you actually like choosing to ask for help, which is something so many people never do. That's a reframe, right? Like that's right. what we do. It's very hard to do it for yourself though. Like this is part of why it's a great idea to work with coaches, be they sex coaches or life coaches or business coaches, right? It's really hard to read the label when you're inside the jar, Amanda. So true. Okay. So I, I think reframing those content ideas would really like might help. And if you are really stuck on where do I start? How do I create content for my, my business? Those types of templates might work for you, whether that is you creating it um, on camera in a reel or video or still photos on Canva or if you are writing, if you are recording something via audio, just answering these types of prompts and reframing them into your own niche. What do your clients want to know about you? I would like to know what is the difference between that template though, that, that content template and a content system? Yeah, so and this is interesting because that came out of our conversation too, because you used a word and I'm like, I would use a different word for that. Because uh, templatize, templatize, yes. templatizing. So taking something that perhaps somebody else wrote and then removing the personally identifying stuff and filling in the blanks with your own stuff, right? Like that's right. kind of like the templatizing or turning right. something into a template. Um, and the amount of like, that can be like a bit of a, an accordion there. Sometimes it can just be like section headers and some description of what kind of stuff to put here all the way down to like a template that's kind of like Mad Libs and it's just like fill in these couple of blanks. Though, so even if you do one like that, I would always encourage you to go and like make it sound like you, like put your own self into those words. 
versus a content system or a content repurposing system or content flow, which this might be, okay, say you say your main content channel. So the main place you put out basic content, in your case is reels, right? Like yeah. you do lots of reels. Um, what you could do in a content flow or a content system is say, okay, so after I make a reel, I'm gonna put it into otter.ai or rev and I'm gonna get the transcript. And then I'm gonna massage that transcript into some text and I'm gonna use that in my newsletter. And then I'm also going to take that text and turn it into a blog post. And so that's a system where wherever you get your anchor content, here's the content that you make out of it. Or, you know, and then I'm also going to share it in my stories. And then I'm gonna take a couple of stills from this reel and share those as individual stories. And then I'm gonna, you know, it's what's really helpful is if you come up with a standard process that you follow, then you can get huge amounts out of every piece of content that you create. Where a lot of people get into trouble is like, they're just constantly on this hamster wheel, making new, making new, making new when actually you're far better off to like make a few really good things and then turn them into a whole bunch of other things. And it's way less work too. Uh, this is something that I that I think you might be referring to in my reels because I, I have recently been going way back. Shh, don't tell anybody. I'm going way back into my old Instagram posts and, and it's not, Instagram is encouraging me to do it. Take your old posts and turn them into reels, right? And you just take these still shots and and then in theory, you can voice over that very long uh, caption that you wrote, you can actually voice over that caption and just read it into a microphone. And, and it's just the caption, but in the background, maybe there's leaves falling. It's just superimposed over a video of some kind of action going on in the background. And what I've just done is taken something that I've already written, already created a canvas still for, and just, I'm just redoing it. Like I'm literally reposting it. But Instagram sees this now as a video and it sees it now as I'm, I'm using a voiceover option, which is like really cool, that, that whatever it's, it's new. So they want you to use all of these little things and I'm not recreate, I'm, I'm not creating anything. This is old stuff, old stuff. It is so fast. And I think this is a thing too. Like, again, I'm looping back around to this idea that for it to count as work, it has to be hard or that like for us to be good enough, we have to be making new stuff all the time. And it's just like, no, <laughs> you don't, you really don't. And it's actually, you know, when you conserve your energy and you direct it in these concentrated ways and you're able to care for yourself and you're able to rest and you're able to feel a sense of ease in your work, like, that's better for you, that's better for your clients, that's better for the world at large and your service in it. Like, and again, I think it can connect sometimes to this idea of like, I mean, using my own words, right? You always have to be the A plus student and you always have to go above and beyond with effort. And it's like, when you do that, you're also kind of depriving people of some of the really beautiful stuff you've already created. Because I guarantee you, it's only a tiny portion of your audience saw that post the first time you put it up, right? So returning to messages again and again, like people have to hear and see things more than once when, because remember part of what we're doing in our marketing is we're needing to shift beliefs because for many of us, our clients have to, our, our future clients have to shift a couple of fundamental beliefs in order to be able to work with a sex coach, right? And that's some of the work that we do in our marketing. Well, and if you only try to do that once ever in a single piece of content, which you post once and you're like, well, it's out there now, it should be doing the work. I mean, that's not, that's not how people work. You know, even when we've, like, even when like I follow you and I only see probably about a fifth of the content that you put up right? Because I'm not on Instagram every day. And some days, like, honestly, maybe I'm looking at stupid cat videos and that's all I'm going to be doing that day. Saws. Like, this is how it is. Yeah. There is nothing, I agree. There is nothing wrong 
with every single post you make uh, alluding to, um, I know, and I know this is what I did initially. It was my, my whole message, my whole message for like a month's worth of posts were you deserve a better sex life. You deserve a better sex life. You deserve a better. And then by the end of the month, I was like, oh my God, if I say that one more time, like I must be alienating every single person that follows me, they must be so tired of hearing you deserve a better sex life. I still have friends that are like, I love that post. I love that post when you said I deserve a better sex life. And I'm like, which one? <laughs> there was more than one. Oh my God. There was so many. <laughs> well, here, like, here's the thing. The only person who reads all of your posts, including all of the drafts, and who knows all of the things that you say is you. And, you know, so sometimes when we have those thoughts, like, oh my God, am I alienating everyone? Everyone must be so sick. It's like, no, you feel like you're alienating yourself because you are so sick of saying, in this case, you deserve a better sex life. Like, it's interesting. And like that for me was so powerful when I had somebody point that out the first time that you're the only person who sees all of this. And, you know, if you're batching posts, which is actually a really efficient way to, to do content, like you're the only person who sat there and made that whole batch in one go, which is like, sometimes at the end, you're like, oh, this is, this is so much. This is like, this is so tedious. Well, it's tedious for you because you just sat here for however long repeating yourself essentially. Right. So we're as, keeping as in perspective. It, it, uh, and, and this is, I don't know how interesting this is to anybody else, but as an actor, as someone who's like performed before, how many times do you, do you practice a scene? How many takes does it, does it require for actors to do a scene and get a camera angle on this person and a camera angle on that person and a camera angle on this person? And that scene is done so many times before the director even says, yeah, we're going to keep it or no, we're not going to keep it. It's just going to end up on the editing room floor, but you don't know as the audience member, you're watching the movie and you think that's the only time those actors ever said that line. And mm -hmm. it's really a to anyone who has been in the industry. God, I'm in LA. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, yep. it's such, it is such a weird thing to think that like you, you enjoying a movie, you have no idea all of the times that scene had to be read 30 times. These actors are saying these lines with cameras rolling. Who knows how many times they said the lines before the camera started rolling. So yep. in creating your content, know that your audience is only going to see the final thing. They might only see one of the 30 takes that you do um, or, or read or listen to. There's so many types of content. I want to make sure that I cover every, every base. Um, and I also believe that, and I, and you've said it already that create like, being transparent, being authentic, speaking from your own voice, becoming way more vulnerable than you think is, is um, desired, right? Like people don't want to know that about me. I find that when I am watching, when I am consuming social media or, or anything else, but I'm going to just kind of stick with social media here. I like when I see um, oh, I, I've been watching, on uh, uh, the, the, the ice skater Rippin, um, Adrian, I forget his, what his first name is. He's been mm -hmm. like, just showing how, how organized his, his drawers are. He's an ice skater that I like to follow. But when I see him like, literally like, this is how I fold my socks. I'm like, Ooh, I want to know how he folds his socks. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. I want to know. And he's like, this is the dumbest video I've ever made. And I'm like, no, no, no. I want to watch it. <laughs> People feel that way about you. Like there is this, like this, this desire to like, know who you are and how authentic you can be does. And I, I'm not saying that you should go and show your underwear drawer to <laughs> 
social media, but like, this is my dog. I don't know. Like I, some, this, this sunset makes me happy is perfectly good content, even as a sex coach, because you might say, and pleasure is important. And if you're not seeking pleasure in every day, then you're missing out. I don't know. Talk to what you like. Like, people work with people and yeah. in the work that we do like there is often this lead up of trust building through parasocial relationships right they uh, many of our prospective clients want to get a chance to feel like they know us better before they feel comfortable reaching out to ask for help with something that is actually a very personal thing <laughs> to you know, like essentially reach out and ask a stranger, except to them at that point, we're not strangers anymore because they've come to know us through what we've shared with the world, be it our podcast, be it our Instagram account, be it our blog posts. And and that's part of the power in the content that we put out into the world is that it's it's how somebody can get to that point and feel like, okay, actually, I can reach out to Amanda. And even then it's still scary, right? Yeah, like reaching out to somebody that you've only ever had a parasocial relationship with can be kind of like, eh. and then if you ever meet them or get on a call with them, it's like, eh, I'm kind of starstruck, like speaking from personal experience or my goodness, the first time I ever met Dr. Patty and I thought I might faint because <laughs> it's like, you've never met me, but like, I've met you in this really big and impactful way. So that can be really helpful to keep in mind too. Like when you, like when somebody is applying for a discovery call with you, it's really useful to have that question about like, how did you find me? Because if they say something like, oh, your podcast, I often have an idea then when they come and join the call that like, they might be that little bit like, oh, you're like, a person who I've been listening to for a while, but we're meeting the first time and to kind of just hold space for that. Like, yeah, it's a little bit weird, isn't it? Like, but welcome. I'm really glad to meet you. Let's have a conversation. And then coming in and like acknowledging that can be really helpful. I don't think I've ever talked about this anywhere before, but like, it's definitely something that I do because I've definitely had people turn up to calls and then be like, yeah, okay. I'm just a little bit nervous because like you're famous. And then I'm sitting there like, what? (laughs) <laughs> am I <laughs> yes yes you are yes you are it, it, it's it's a it's, it's a fun it's a fun way to, to to feel it might be a little uh um hu- humbling not humiliating humbling right uh to 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 be like oh you've read my articles I I I'm not a writer Right. Right. So that's, that's such a, such a interesting position to be in. And and it comes back to everything is content. Um, the more or less templatized scripted 30 prompts, if that's how you start to, this is the way I fold my socks, people, you know, like don't try to be perfect in, in the bedroom, anywhere in the bedroom, you know, like you can kind of have that truly imperfect aspect be the thing or or that might be the thing that that brings that draws someone to you agreed final thoughts biggest takeaways um well just a final thought if you want an even easier place to start memes just share memes just share memes and make like a little quip about them you'd be surprised at how well that does. I was, I was actually really annoyed about this. There's a, a business coach that I think you and I both follow. Her name is uh, Simone Soul. And uh, so good. She, has a, she has a podcast called Joyful Marketing. And on that podcast, you can learn about a thing called the Garbage Post Challenge. And this is such a, it's a fun thing to do, whether you're just getting started or you've been at it for a while, which the idea is that just for 30 days, you like you garbage post, which it's like, it's just like, there needs to be some words in English on the thing that you post, but you just do it and you do it a lot. And it's, it's kind of like the 100 no's exercise that is so common in like sales force training, because you kind of desensitize a little bit to posting. 
But Amanda, like, so here's my final thought. Like the first time I did this, after years of creating like long form content and really like thoroughly research things, because I do have a background in academics and like sharing some of the frankly best things I've ever created. I did this garbage post challenge. I had so much more engagement than I ever have in my entire life prior to that. I was totally humbled by it. I was sharing inane meme fluff and it brought, it brought people who never comment on my stuff out of the woodwork to leave a comment on that. And the answer isn't just post memes all the time. It's more that like people are looking for play. People are looking for entertainment. People are looking to know a bit about you and the kind of memes that you choose to share is also communicating something about yourself, right? So and true. like, there's many roads to Rome. You don't have to write academic essays for your content to be good enough. That's my takeaway. Oh, I love that. My favorite meme is meanwhile in my mother uterus. And it's like a, a, a painting, an oil painting of like the French revolution, like, and yeah, I actually got a lot of, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was like my, my favorite meme ever. Um, Let's have final... a Fab Friday in the future at some point where we just talk about our favorite memes. <laughs> let's, let's. Uh, my biggest takeaway is um, people want to get to know you before they reach out to you. And content is how we do that. And you can, yeah. So that's, that's my biggest takeaway. How we want it. We want to know who you are. We want to know who you are. Beautifully put. All right. Till next time. Uh, next month, Dr. Patty and I are going to be talking about Orgasm Inc. The, uh, mm -hmm. the Netflix documentary. Yes. Yes. It's, it's going fantastic. to be juicy. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah, for joining me. Thank you all for who, anybody who's watching now, watching the replay, comment, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Have a fabulous Friday. <laughs>